A young boy spotted something unusual by the lake and quickly called the police. What they uncovered next was nothing short of shocking. It can't be, said Tommy, opening his eyes wide as if to see better beyond his amazement. How the heck did it end up down there? No one at the moment could give an answer. This was not just the easy enthusiasm of a 15-year-old. What had been brought to light shocked the entire group of volunteers. No one had any idea what was in store for them that day when they decided to help Tommy. Early on a spring morning, 15-year-old Tommy decided to take a walk around Lake Curtin. This little lake was tucked away in a thick forest, far from any popular boating sports due to its small size and hidden location, and it always caught Tommy's interest. His curiosity spiked when he spotted a strange set of tracks that went into the lake but didn't come back out. These tracks were weird enough to make him want to dig deeper. Tommy spent days then weeks watching the lake. Soon he noticed something even stranger. Bubbles kept coming up from one spot in the lake, and they weren't just any bubbles. These bubbles seemed to have a regular rhythm, almost like they were trying to tell him something. Using a stick, he rigged up to measure things. Tommy started tracking down how often and where these bubbles appeared, guessing they might be a clue to something hidden under the water. Tommy couldn't keep this to himself, so he told his best friend Jess, who was just as intrigued. They tossed around ideas of what could be under the water. Treasure, maybe, or a secret passageway to an underground river. They kept visiting the lake, each time coming up with more wild theories. But after two months without any real answers and their patience wearing thin, they figured it was time to call in the experts. At first, the local police didn't really believe Tommy's story, but he had put together all his notes and observations so well that one young cop got interested and thought there might be something to it. The police decided to check it out, expecting to prove it was just a local legend. However, the minute they saw those unusual tracks and the bubbles for themselves, they got hooked by the mystery too. The investigation took a new turn when the police sent a diver in and found something odd about the mud at the bottom of the lake. It was way too soft, like something had been stirring it up or maybe even buried there recently. This clue was enough to bring in a specialized dive team with better gear to take a closer look. As this new team got their equipment ready, they picked up weird signals on their sonar right in the middle of the lake. Where those bubbles had been popping up, the signals pointed to a big metal object buried under the mud, way bigger than anyone, including the locals, had imagined. Everyone in town started guessing what it could be, from an old crashed airplane to just a big joke someone had set up. But the truth was about to get even more mind-blowing. While they were setting up to dig deeper, the team stumbled upon a second, smaller weird thing near the first spot. They quickly figured out it was a bunch of old containers that were all sealed up. When they carefully opened them, they found old military stuff, some sealed documents that seemed to be from World War II. This find made people think the lake might have been used as a place to dump stuff during the war, and everyone in town was glued to this theory. Now that they knew this site had major historical value, they planned the big dig. The authorities blocked off the area, and news about the find spread everywhere, drawing in historians, military buffs, and folks hoping to find treasure from all over. Suddenly, this quiet town was in the spotlight, with Lake Curtin right at the center. On the day started the big dig, everyone was at the lakeside watching eagerly. The media and the bunch of excited onlookers were all there as the team began to pull out the big metal object. Bit by bit, as they cleared away the mud and water, the shape of a huge, rusty object started the show. It was larger and better preserved than anyone had hoped. The high point of the day came when they finally figured out what the object was a full-sized military tank from World War II, still with faded markings from the Soviet and German armies. This discovery cleared up the mystery of those strange tracks and their bubbles. As news of the World War II tank spread, the initial excitement turned into a flurry of questions and theories about why the tank was there and what it was for. Driven by the public's keen interest and the historical importance of the find, the authorities kicked off a thorough investigation to uncover more about the lake and its hidden secrets. A surprising turn came when military experts and historians got a closer look at the tank. Even though it had been underwater for so long, the inside parts of the tank were in surprisingly good shape. This led them to think that someone had intentionally sealed the tank up to keep it safe underwater, like they were trying to hide it on purpose. The investigation got even more intense, and they brought in a team of underwater archaeologists to really explore the lakebed. 
These experts found something even stranger. A bunch of cables stretching from the shore all the way to the tank. These cables weren't from the World War II era. They seemed to have been put there much later, possibly during the Cold War. This made people think the lake might have been used for some secret military testing back then. The story got thicker when some of the oldest folks in town started sharing bits and pieces of stories they heard from their parents, who were around during World War II. They talked about a secret military group that was near the lake back then, but weirdly, there were no official records from that time. This lack of records made it seem like maybe there was a cover-up to keep the lake's military importance a secret. As more stuff came to light, everyone's attention turned to the sealed containers found near the tank. When they opened these containers, they found coded messages and maps that showed plans for troop movements and supply routes. When cryptographers and historians worked together to crack these codes, they discovered plans for a sneaky operation that was supposed to start from Lake Curtin. This plan was meant to mess with enemy lines, but it looks like they never went through with it when the war changed direction. Then an even more shocking twist popped up. One of the maps pointed to a hidden bunker entrance near the lake's edge. Teams hurried to dig it up, and after some tense days of digging and pumping out water, they found an underground bunker loaded with old radio gear and food that had long gone bad. This bunker, still in great condition, seemed to have been a command center for the operation connected to the tank. Finding this bunker threw light on how important Lake Curtin was during World War II. It wasn't just a random place to dump stuff. It had been picked on purpose for big military moves, and this secret was kept tight long after the war was over. As they wrapped up the investigation, the stuff they found at Lake Curtin really changed how people saw the wartime history of the area. The tank became a star too. They fixed it up nicely, and it ended up being the main attraction at a new local museum that told the story of the lake during the war. Getting the tank out of the mud wasn't easy. They planned to use some heavy machines, but the mud was stickier and thicker than they had thought, which messed up the machinery. They thought fast and came up with a new way to lift the tank using hydraulic lifts and tougher cables that would spread out the weight better to avoid any damage. Just when they thought they had it figured out, another surprise popped up. While moving the equipment around, a diver found something else in the mud. A smaller vehicle, maybe a military jeep, that looked like it was part of the same group as the tank. This meant they had to plan how to get both things out without messing anything up. And just as they sorted that out, another curveball came their way. Environmentalists were worried that pulling these big items out could hurt the lake's wildlife, some of which were pretty rare. The team had to work with environmental experts to make sure they did everything super carefully. They planned the extraction to avoid the times when the animals were breeding and set up special barriers to keep all the muck and bits from spreading around. While they were figuring out how to handle these environmental concerns, they stumbled upon something big. The encrypted documents they found earlier suggested there might be more stuff hidden under the water. A deeper scan of the lake turned up several small storages of weapons and ammo, all kept dry in waterproof containers. They carefully took these out, learning even more about the military activities that had happened at Lake Curtin. Another unexpected moment came when they finally started lifting the tank. Just as it was getting close to the surface, the structure began to shift. Like it might fall apart, the engineering team had to think fast. They stopped everything and put in some custom supports to strengthen the weak spots on the tank. This quick fix made sure the tank could be safely brought up without losing any historical pieces or damaging the tank itself. With the tank safe on shore, its successful retrieval was not just a win for engineering but also a big reveal of a hidden piece of history from the war. The tank, along with the jeep and other finds, was carefully cleaned and prepped for display. These pieces were soon going to be stars in the local museum, telling the story of the lake's secretive military past. After the intense efforts at Lake Curtin, everyone thought the next steps, cataloging and preserving the finds, would be straightforward. But as it turned out, the story just keeps getting more interesting. When historians started checking out what was in the military jeep near the tank, they found a sealed metal box with rolls of undeveloped film inside. Once they developed these films, they uncovered detailed photos and videos of unknown military sites and personnel. This was a huge find. It showed that Lake Curtin might have been a key spot for spying during the war, a piece of history that nobody had known before. As the experts dug into the decrypted documents and these newly found films, another twist came up. The documents mentioned a secret mission called Operation Silent Waters, aimed at messing with enemy communications. This mission was never actually carried out, but the lake had been used to store all the gear for it. 
Suddenly, the reason for the tank and the jeep being there made sense. They were part of this big secret plan. Then there was another turn. Inside the tank, they found a personal diary from a German officer who had switched sides to join the Allies and was tasked with hiding the tank. His diary entries gave real insight into his journey, his reasons for switching sides, and his worries about getting caught by either side. This diary turned these military items into something more personal. They weren't just war machines, they were part of someone's story. As everyone tried to wrap their heads around these new facts, the local university's linguistics department, which was helping to translate some German documents, discovered coded messages in the diary. And guess what? These weren't in German, but in a special code that the officer had made up. When they cracked this code, they found a hidden map pointing to another spot in the lake, hinting that there might be more stuff hidden underwater. Driven by this clue, they started another underwater search. This led to another surprise. They found a small stash of personal items that probably belonged to the officer who defected, including his lost dog tags, a locket with a photo, and letters to his family. These finds brought a new, more personal dimension to the story, showing the personal sacrifices and the often unseen human sides of war. Once all the artifacts were preserved and studied, they became key exhibits at the new museum, drawing scholars and visitors from all over the world. Tommy and Jess, the duo who first spotted the unusual tracks and bubbles in the lake, were celebrated at the museum's grand opening. They were recognized not only for their curiosity, but also for their part in digging up a lost piece of history. As the town of Lake Curtin began to embrace its new role as a historical hotspot, the museum started pulling in crowds. At that time, a documentary team showed up, eager to make a series about World War II artifacts that had been forgotten. They were particularly drawn to the story about a tank, a jeep, and the covert mission known as Operation Silent Waters. But as they dug deeper, they discovered another layer of the town's history that nobody saw coming. The big twist came when the documentary crew interviewed the oldest folks in town. One elderly man, known to be as the town historian, shared an old legend about the spy known only as the Shadow, believed to have been active in the area during the war. The crew was hooked by the tale and decided to chase down this lead, which surprisingly linked up with the secrets they'd already uncovered at Lake Curtin. While digging through old archives for any mention of the Shadow, the team found a sealed envelope hidden in an old file at a local library. Inside were letters between the Shadow and that unknown contact, detailing spy activities against the enemy during the war. Things got even more interesting when they realized that the handwriting matched that of the mysterious officer who had defected and hidden the tank. This officer might have actually been the Shadow. Motivated by this discovery, the documentary team convinced the local authorities to do a thorough search of the area marked on the map found in the defected officer's diary. This led them to another old bunker, well hidden in the forest near the lake. Inside they found radio gear, code machines and a bunch of encrypted messages that had never been sent. Decoding these messages uncovered plans for a big allied sabotage mission that was called off last minute due to a sudden change in the war's direction. The plot thickened when the researchers looked more into the military records and found a mission file with a photo of the shadow. The picture proved their guesses right. The man in the photo was the same one who wrote the diary found in the tank. He was actually a highly respected but unhappy German officer who had changed sides worried about what would happen to Europe after the war. And there was yet another twist. Among the items they found underwater was a letter the Shadow wrote but never sent to his sister. In the letter, he shared his worries and hopes about his role in the war and his sadness about having to leave his family. He had planned to come back for the letter and his other personal items but looks like he never did. This new personal story added another layer to how the town viewed its own history and brought even more attention from around the world to Lake Curtin. The documentary was shown all over, bringing in more tourists and historians keen to check out the artifacts and learn about the remarkable stories of bravery and secrecy hidden under the calm waters of the lake curtain. Thanks for watching. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. And if this story resonated with you, go ahead and hit that like button.